I have some uh, guidelines for graphing rational functions. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find the domain. And uh, what we're going to look for is where the denominator is going to be equal to zero. So we'll set it not equal to zero because we don't want to divide by zero. So the first thing to do is to find uh, the domain. And we've done that all semester long. Um, next thing to do is to try to factor and reduce. Um, if any factor reduces, you might end up having a hole there. Um, the third thing to do is find and plot the intercepts, so that means the x and the y intercepts. Um, find and graph your asthmatopes. Your asthmatopes will be the x, I mean, uh, will be vertical and horizontal asthmatopes, and maybe, maybe slant asthmatopes too. And the fifth thing to do is you're going to make a sign chart with your x intercepts and then uh, the location of your vertical asthmatopes, because those are the only places where you may change from positive to negative or negative to positive. So for the first function we'll look at is x over x plus 2. Um, the domain is going to be where the everything except for where the denominator is equal to 0. If we set that denominator x plus 2 not equal to 0, we'll get uh, negative 2 as, as the only value that's going to make that 0. So I'm going to use this funny looking R, which just stands for the real numbers. So our domain is going to be everything except for uh, negative 2. Anything else will be okay. It's just negative 2 will result in division by 0. So we have to exclude it and draw our x and y plane. Um, and then we'll go ahead and find the intercepts. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and find the y-intercept first. So if we're crossing the y-axis all the values on the y-axis, all the x values are going to be zero. So we're going to plug uh, zero in for x and find what the y is. Remember f of x is the same thing as y. f of zero is equal to zero over x plus two, which is zero. So we have a y-intercept at the origin, zero, zero, and we went ahead and uh, graphed it right there. So I know that the graph is going to be crossing there. Um, now if I want to find the y-intercept, what would I, what I would have is I would have um, 0 for the y, so I'd have 0 equals x over x plus 2. But the only time a fraction is equal to 0 is if the numerator is equal to 0. Okay. So then we get 0 is equal to x, and we'd have the same pair as 0, 0. So this is our x and y intercept. Not every time this happens, but it does happen every now and then. Now we'll find our asthmatopes. Um, first thing is, after we factored and reduced, there's nothing to factor or reduce here. Um, so what's left is for our vertical asthmatope is where's the denominator equal to zero, and that's going to be at negative two. And then our y-intercept is going to be um, determined by the coefficients in front of the x's. Notice that they're both tied with exponents of 1 and their coefficients are 1. So our horizontal asthmatope is just going to be 1 over 1 or just 1. So we'll go ahead and draw in our asthmatopes. And we're going to have a vertical one at negative 2 and then a horizontal one at, at uh, 1 and we'll make them dotted lines. Okay. Um, now the last thing to do is to um, make a sign chart using um, our intercept, so we're going to have a 0, and then also our vertical asymptote of negative 2. So we're going to put those on. Those are our cut points or boundary values, or they're called a number of different things. Okay. So we'll put in uh, 0 and negative 2, and then we're just going to test the left to negative 2, in between negative 2 and 0, and to the right of 0. Plug in negative 3. And um, I get a positive. So that means I'm going to be uh, above. So I'm either going to do this or this. Now it's, it's not this second branch that I just drew. It's not this one because you see I'm crossing the x-axis there and I don't have an x-intercept there. So it's not going to be down there. has to be the branch above. 
The asymptotes help guide our graph, so we know we're going to be approaching the asymptotes. Now we're going to test in between um, uh, negative. I'm sorry, negative two and zero, and I know I'm going to cross the y-axis, so I'm either going to do uh, something like this. But if I do this, I'm not going to be able to get back up and approach my asymptote. And um, if I do, I'm going to have to cross the x-axis again somewhere, and I can't do that. I only have one x-intercept, so we can't cross. So more than likely, I'm going to have something that looks like this. So what that's going to tell me is it probably will be negative between uh, negative 2 and 0, and then to the right, I'll have a positive. Plug in negative one, half a negative one, and we get a negative. And I can go ahead and plug in one more test point like I do here. Um, but I didn't need to because I know it's negative here, and I know I cross the x axis here, and I need to approach this asymptote. But if we want to play it safe, we can do one more test point. Here. Look at another one. We'll call it g this time. x minus 1, I think, over x plus 2, x minus 3. It's already factored and reduced, so we don't have to um, do anything like that. Um, the domain is going to be everything except for where x plus 2 and x minus 3 are equal to 0. So the domain is going to be everything except for negative 2 and positive 3. Those numbers are going to give me 0 in the denominator. I'm going to go ahead and draw in my xy plane, and then we're going to find our asymptotes, our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. After I factored and reduced, where my denominator is equal to zero is um, going to be a vertical asymptote. So I have vertical asymptotes at negative two and also at three. Um, now for the horizontal asymptote, if there is one, the degree upstairs is 1. The degree downstairs, we'd have to foil it out, but I'd have degree 2. Um, so the bottom would be larger, have a larger degree than the top. And if that happens, then we have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. And go ahead and draw in my, uh, my three asymptotes. And now we're going to go after the intercepts. We're going to go after the y-intercept and also the x-intercept. So first, if the x is 0, that means we're crossing the y-axis. We're going to plug in 0 for all the x's. And we get a positive 1, 6. So I'm going to do the best I can. We're going to pretend that down there that's 0, 1, 6. It might be a little bit closer, but that's all right. We're, we're just looking for a, a sketch. That's my y-intercept. That's the easier of the two to find, usually. The x-intercept is sometimes a little trickier. Um, and when we're doing the x-intercept, that's going to mean the y is going to be equal to 0, because we haven't gone up or down if we're on the x-axis. Okay. So we have x minus 1 over the denominator. And remember, a fraction is equal to 0 if the numerator is equal to 0. So we only got to worry about 0 is equal to x minus 1. And if we solve that, 0 equals x minus 1, x will have to be positive 1. So we have an x-intercept at um, 1 comma 0, and I'll go ahead and draw that in as a yellow dot right here. So I know I'm going to be crossing at my y-intercept and my x-intercept. Um, now just based off of that information, I know that I'm going to be crossing here and crossing here and I need to approach my asymptotes. So it's probably going to look something like this. That, those are the places where I got to cross. But we'll still make our sign chart. So our sign chart is going to consist of the um, vertical asymptote location, negative 2 and 3, and also the x-intercept at um, 1. And then we'll play the same game. We'll uh, pick some test points, so we'll pick negative 3 and we'll plug it in and we're only interested in positive or negative. And let's see what we get.
Well, I skipped some steps here, but I got a negative, a negative, and a negative. So three negatives is going to make a negative. Okay, so that means I'm below the x-axis. I need to approach my asymptote, and then I need to approach my other asymptote down here. So this is going to be the shape. All right. Now, we already kind of discussed what's happening in the middle here, but we can use a sign chart to still help us out. And um, we got one for free. Um, zero can be a test point, and we already did zero. It's up here. One, six, and that's a nice positive number. So I know it's going to be positive over here, so it has to approach this asymptote from above. I know it's going to come down, cross the y-axis, and then cross the x-axis, and it has to come down. Now, if we want to pick something between 1 and 3, we can absolutely do that. So I'll let you do that on, on your own if you don't believe me. And then we'll do one more. We're going to test 4. And that's going to tell us what we're going to do over on the right. We're either going to do this, or we're going to do this. Those are the two options. Okay, so we'll plug 4 in, and I think we get a positive, so that means we're going to be above. Okay, not so bad. All right, one more, and uh, this one's going to, I think, have a slant asymptote, which I don't know if it's really covered a whole lot in name, but it is certainly in college algebra. So h of x is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6 all over x plus 1. Uh, in AIM, we'll at least mention horizontal or, uh, slant asymptotes, and in college algebra, we'll, we'll de uh, certainly do it. How I know I'm going to have a slant asymptote is the top's degree is one larger than the bottom's degree. The top's degree is two and the bottom's degree is one. So I know I'm going to have a slant asymptote. Um, and let's keep going. So if I factor the top, which I didn't do right off the bat, x squared plus 5x plus 6, that's going to factor into x plus 2 and x plus 3. So x plus 2 and x plus 3 are not like x plus 1, so there's nothing to reduce. So when x plus 1 is equal to 0 is at negative 1, so that's why our domain is everything except for negative 1. Alright, and we put in our x and our y intercept, and now I go ahead and I factor that, um, that numerator, which I was just mentioning, x plus 2, x plus 3, and you see that we don't have any like factors there, so that's it. Now, factoring the uh, numerator is going to be helpful for finding the uh, x-intercepts. Now, we're going to have an asymptote at x equals negative 1, and I'm going to have a slant, or the, some people might call it an oblique asymptote. And um, how, you, how you find the slant asymptote is you've got to do long division. So if we did do the long division, you'd have the x plus 1, and then over here you'd have x squared plus 5x plus 6. And you go through the plot process, and I do believe it was um, x plus 4. That's your quotient up here. So if we went through the process of doing that long division, we would get a quotient of x plus 4. That's going to be my slant asymptote. Now, when I write my slant asymptote, it's going to be y equals x plus 4. So let me get all this junk out of the way. Now, I draw in my vertical asymptote at negative 1, and my slant asymptote, this is linear, that's a line, so it has a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of 1 over 1. So you're going to go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. So this one's a little different because we got the slant asymptote. Um, now, I'm going to find my intercepts because that's going to help me too with my asymptotes to kind of get the picture. Find the y-intercept, so we plug 0 in for the x, and we get uh, 6 as our y-coordinate of our y-intercept, so 0, 6. That's going to be up here. So you see it right, right up here. Now I'm going to be approaching my asymptotes, so most likely what's going to happen is something along these lines. 
Something like that uh, is probably what's going to happen there. Alright, now I'm going to find my um, x-intercepts. And that's when the y is equal to zero. Okay, so we only care about the numerator equaling zero when we're looking for y-intercepts. So that's my numerator. So I just need to solve this. x plus 2, x plus 3. So I'm going to get uh, x-intercepts at negative 2 and uh, negative 3 when we solve that. So negative 2, 0, and negative 3, 0. I'm going to go ahead and plot those in. Um, I know I'm going to be approaching my asthmatopes like this and this. And I'm going to be crossing uh, the uh, x-axis. So it's probably going to look something like that. Now we can go ahead and make our uh, sign chart, and what we're interested in is our two intercepts, and then also the uh, uh, vertical asymptote at negative one. I haven't put it in yet, but we're going to go ahead and test the left of negative four, or left of negative three. Excuse me. That's our intercept. Our intercept right here. So the left of that would be negative four. Go ahead and plug it in. You can use the factored form or you can use the uh, original. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same thing. All right, so I got a negative. And uh, if it's negative here, I can kind of cheat and not have to do the whole sign chart. I know it's negative here, so it's going to approach its slant asymptote. I know it crosses here and here and then it has to approach as asymptote. So I can cheat a little bit and not have to do the whole time. You can, though, and you'll get the same thing. Um, you'll have to pick something not so nice to, to test between negative 3 and negative 2, like negative uh, 2.5. Um, now, if we're going to test between... Uh, so I, I, I kind of cheated here and, and didn't do the rest of the sign chart, but you can, you can do it on your own, and I'm out of space, too. Um, and I mentioned what happened over here. We know we're going to cross this y-intercept, and I know I'm going to approach my uh, my vertical asymptote. So I know I'm going to be up here, coming down, and I guess the only other thing I would need to know is um, it might pr approach from below, or it might approach from above, but uh, it's going to approach from from above.